It's something you gotta roll some up to. Pour you a drink, maybe drop the top, and just roll with me. Come on. My name is Wes Jones, producer, rapper, entrepreneur, and clothing line designer for my brand Drum Life. We all know that drummers are the heartbeat of the band. So I created this show to inspire people to show love and give light to some of the biggest musicians playing for some of the biggest artists in the world today. So come hang out with me on this episode of Hi Hats. The sun beaming through the glass roof Louis tennis, crushed linen, diamonds glistening Money slipping at the same time while I'm spinning you I do? got some to use right now, but I need some more for the night Okay, yeah, I'll run down there then Yeah, yeah Want me to just run down there and get you a pack? Yeah, stream 5A. Can we go up right here? No, you gotta go around to the front, bro. I see a camera behind me. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what I said, but I wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's no audio. Oh, it's no What's audio. Good, <laughs> 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 what the hell? Yeah, 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 what has to really go over in order for that to close. Oh man, let me tell you something. Uh, Sticks is one of the most incredible drummers on the planet, hands down. He brings the energy to any band that you that he falls into. Like, let me see. Me and Sticks been working together for almost two years at this point, and we just had our rehe first rehearsal less than a couple months ago. So even more now, the appreciation I have for him being a music director, he, I, yo, it's like second nature. Me and him, we don't even have no discussions like, bet, cool, and that'll be on stage. One of the dopest, that's my bro, man. I promise you, he's one of the best. If you ever get a chance to work with him, he's gonna change your life, I promise y'all. Any side of the fence, R&B, gospel, pop, whatever. So that, Devin Six Taylor, what, what can you say? And he just had a new baby, my niece is here, Caitlin. Oh, yeah. Everybody, it's Devin Taylor, aka Sticks Taylor, all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. You did. I've been knowing about drum life since about 2013 or 14, and um, the whole reason why I got with the movement is because, yo, when I first met my boy Wes, he was like a big brother to me, like an OG. You feel me? Like, and it was nothing but love and like uh, a real bun, like when we first met. So that's what made me want to get behind the movement. My dad and my mom introduced me to music. Um, I always been interested in the music though since I was a, a young jit man, since I was little bro. I'm 26 now. My parents say I started playing the drums when I was like two. My mom always say like, um, when she used to be in the club or at my pop shows, cause my pop, he's a singer or whatever. So he had a group, they were signed to like Warner Brothers back in the day. They had a group um, called Everybody's Brother. My mom would go to the shows and rehearsals and stuff when she was pregnant and she said that her shirt used to be kicking like well I used to be kicking like her shirt used to be moving like this to whatever beat grandpa R.I.P. pops um he bought me my first drum kit when I was two and they was like ever since then I've been on it the most valuable lesson when it comes to being a musician 50 percent your crab you feel what I'm saying or like maybe 40 percent your crab and the rest of it it's what you do off stage, who you are as a person, like your character, you feel what I'm saying? Because you may have the chops, you may be able to do this, you may be able to play that, but don't nobody want to be with a person that, you know what I mean, whose hygiene is messed up, whose attitude is messed up, you feel me? Who can't make a flight on time, you feel me? Um, who can't get the rehearsals and stuff on time? Like, it's, it's way deeper than just your plans, but I learned that at a young age.
Yes. Yeah, they love us. Yeah. Listen, this, this is my favorite cologne. How how did you discover it? Uh, I was on tour and I got it when I was in London. In London. Okay, so how long ago? Because I know it hasn't been around for too long. It's been around since 2006, but it's been so low-key. Yeah, uh, this is in 2016. Okay, so you what still still... What scent do you like? Scent? I like the scent all 33 and another 13. Another 13. Oh, nice! I like the scent. <laughs> my first big show? Um, my very first big show that I, I felt that way was with Music Soul Child. And that was in like 2012. We went to Europe, bro. It was my first time ever going to Europe. It was my first time ever playing with a, a mainstream secular artist as well. And, um, man, yeah. When I seen all those people out in the crowd and, and like, just dancing to, like, what we were playing, you feel me? Like, I was like, man, this is crazy. Because these are songs that I listen to on the radio, but I get a chance to play these songs, you feel what I'm saying? I get a chance to see how everybody else responds to us playing it. I didn't know I was good enough. How about that? Let's start right there. Shout out to my homie, Jay Troy. He was the music director um, at the time for Music Soul Child. And um, I was playing around town. And like a lot of people, they had been hearing about me around town back in Atlanta. Like I didn't even go out and start like playing like in the clubs and stuff till I turned like 17, bro, in Atlanta. It's like I was sneaking in clubs and like with my OGs, with like my big brothers who I call them, like the homies. And like, man, just playing around town, playing with like different artists. And um, everybody was hearing who I was because I was like the new kid on the block. And um, I did a gig and he, he so happened to be at the same gig that I was at. And he was like, yo man, I've been hearing about you. Like I'm Jake Troy, you feel what I'm saying? Like, and I was like, yeah, Troy, I know you. You the MD for, for music, you play bass. You feel me? Like, I know you through my homie Paige, like that. And then he was just like, yeah. He was like, man, he said, bro, you are killing, bro. He said, I promise, bro, the very first time I can put you on something, dog, I'm going to put you on something, bro. But, like, me at that age, I was just like, all right, cool, you know, whatever. Like, if he put me on something, cool. If he don't, cool. It's cool, like, you know, to be able to meet, like, the dudes that's doing it, like, in my city, like, at a big-time level. So I was like, all right, cool. Like, nice to meet you, Troy, or whatever. He told me that we exchanged information. And literally, bro, probably like a month or two later, he called me and was just like, yo, what do you have to do on these dates? And I was like, nothing. I think I'm free. He's like, you want to go to uh, Europe with music? And I was like, huh? He was like, yeah, if you want to fill in for Paige. Like, Paige can't do some stuff. You feel me? Like, and music about to go to Europe for like two or three weeks. And I want to use you. So, <laughs> I didn't even know I was good enough, bro. <laughs> That's man. Now that you have the internet, bro, there's no way to you. You can't ever say, I can't do this, or I don't know how to do this. We live in a day of age with my generation, bro, where Google and the internet has everything on it. Only you got to do is go in and type in, how do I program SPDS pad, or how do I you uh, take a sound from my pad and put it on my trigger or something. Like, anything, you feel me? Like, and another thing is, you just got to be able to take constructive criticism and just be able to be open-minded and just listen. Yo, 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 I'm Chris Key, Charlotte, North Carolina. Drum life. <laughs> Hi, hats, let's go. Man, I've been involved in music, I'm 35, probably with 33 years. You know what I'm saying? Kind of came up under my, my pops, all the greats like Calvin Rogers, Ladell Abrams, Doobie Powell, Teddy Campbell, Little John Roberts. Um, this goes on and on and on. All the greats came through this, like my pops came first, so that's how I got my start. All my life, really, I've been touring with my father sitting in the background, and I always wanted to just play, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always wanted to play, but when I got serious about it, uh, Calvin Rogers moved on and started playing with R. Kelly. And uh, my father actually called me to his house, and it was like a, guy, it was like a godfather scene. Like, he was, yeah, he was like, yo, you ready to do this? So I thought he was about to get me, I got in trouble in school. So he was like, yo, you want to play drums on the road me full time, man? And honestly, man, that saved my life. And ever since then, it's been on. It's been my career, it's been my love. I, it's all I do, you know what I'm saying? Music, 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 music. My earliest memory of drumming, I was four years old, um, maybe three or four. I was in preschool, and uh, my father, Cedric Thompson, uh, his wife, and some other people came, and they did a program a program at my, my preschool. And I played a song, original song from my, with my father, 
with Cedric Thompson. And I remember it like it was yesterday. That was my first time ever playing in front of a crowd. So that's my earliest memory, four years old. When I knew that I was good enough to play with my father, I honestly, playing with my father was like, that's an accomplishment because he's not the easiest to play for. You know, I'm into the, I'm into the Prince and the James Browns and the, and the Rick James, like the funk, you know what I'm saying? It was never hard, it was never easy to deal with because they were so passionate about their music. So when I knew I was good enough, honestly, I was in my mid-20s. I mean, I went through boot camp, man. They go through it, sticks go through it now, you know, playing with Pops and it's boot camp. Like, he, he liked the snare and the velocity of the kick drum to be the same, and you got to hit hard. I just seen all the soft hitters get sent home. So, when I was about 23, I knew I, I, knew I had a little something, you know. The most challenging thing about being a, a musician, man, is to travel, you know what I'm saying? And for me, I have a son, you know what I'm saying? And I always want to be around him. Sometimes, like, traveling can really take up all your time. So traveling is right, probably like some of the hardest. You know, people don't say it enough because, you know, you're in first class, you're on the, you know, the Prevost bus, the flights, you know. It's hard. It's really hard. You know what I'm saying? It's hard. And it's a hustle. It's nothing easy, you know. It's, it's, it's a hustle, seriously. Devin Taylor, man, I met Devin Taylor when he was seven years old. Um, him and his father used to come to my father's conferences back in the day. And Devin would always call me. Always call me. I mean, he'd be in school and he would call me like, I gotta get it with you, man. We gotta hang out. We gotta play drums. And when I came to Atlanta, he grew up a little bit and he was older and he was like, you know, he was like in guitar center drum offs and everything like that. But with Devin, he was a special one. You know what I'm saying? He was special because it was like our relationship is not drums. You know, I was always on him about the lifestyle of a, of a drummer, you know, the other, the other side of the fence. And I've always been on him. Like he was living in Atlanta. I remember going to his house and I told him, I was like, bro, Move to LA. <laughs> I told him move to LA, and boom. Well, I don't see myself playing all my life. I I I, I see myself. I, I want to produce more. You know what I'm saying? Um, I really want to get into jingles. You know, the, the traveling thing. I've, I've done it. I've been to Africa. <laughs> I've been to Hawaii, and I've been to London. And I've been to the Netherlands. Like that's fine. I, that's that's cool. But it's nothing like collecting a quarterly check for what you do. Longevity. That's where I'm at with it, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be sitting behind the drums all the time, traveling, wearing and tear on my body, because I'm 35 now, and I feel it, you know what I'm saying? Like, so what I want to do, man, I really want to start doing more and more production, you know what I'm saying, more commercials. Um, you know, I'm about to actually get my school together, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to start really teaching other, and it's not really drum school, it's music school. Production, you know, etiquette, everything, you know what I'm saying? I really want to like tackle that stuff, you know, and it's a big, <laughs> and where I'm from in Charlotte, it's a big avenue for it, you know, since so needed. So, um, I have a lot of friends who was in the street, and um, the music saved their life, you know. And um, it's crazy because where I'm from, man, it actually saved mine. My father saved my life, you know what I mean? He grabbed me when I was in high school trying to run with the who's who's. He, 16 years old, he grabbed me up, and I was on the road with him, you know what I'm saying? And my story is just small compared to the baby. He's from Charlotte, you know what I'm saying? From Cleveland, but the baby from Charlotte, we're from the same hood. But <laughs> it saved his life. He's out here on the road. You know, other, it's other people, you know, other drummers, other keyboard players. Get into something else if you can. If you really, if you really want, like I said earlier, if you really want to do it, go do it. And it's like, man, like, I know a lot of people who are today's gangsters, but music saved their life. You know, they're, they're professional musicians. They're out on the road with number one artists. But you know, like, sometimes you got to find that avenue. If, if, if music is that, go do it. You know what I'm saying? You have to build relationships, and this goes back to what I was saying, so it's a whole other side. You have to learn who is who, to be around who, you know, where it's at. You got to go to L.A. You might have to go to L.A. Or build a relationship with a musical director, you know what I'm saying? Not the drummers, not the ones who want the same job as you. That's the important part. Always know your strengths, you know what I'm saying? Know what you're good at, and go for that, you know what I'm saying? If you're a jazz drummer, go do it. If you, were, you, know, you want to do gospel, go meet. The, the, you know, the producers and, you know what I'm saying? Try to get in with the producers and everything. So that's what you do, you know what I mean? Go where it's at. Just take the time out to just learn um, and really, really, really dial in on your craft. If you got an SPDS pad, just as much time as you take to play your drums, sit down and learn that pad as well. Learn how to go through it, learn how to sample, learn how to trigger your sounds, you feel me? Like, learn how to be able to, if you're in a situation and um, you're on the gig, and the music director, the Pro Tools guy, or the artist come in and be like, hey man, did you get the sounds from the record that we sit on the Dropbox? And you say, yeah, but you don't know how to dump them in your pad, then they're gonna be like, oh man, like, well, we 
sent you the stuff before rehearsal started. You don't have no sounds. Like, I remember when I got on the Rita Ora gig, Chris Pooley is the music director for her. He does American Idol, Katy Perry, a bunch of stuff. He sent out the music. He sent out the Dropbox. And my Dropbox, it was the drum stems, just the drums by itself, so I can just hear what the drums were playing, like, loud. Then he had the, the arrangements. He had the music stems. In the, all like the individual like stems for us to learn and also in that folder he had the drum samples like the samples that I had to play or whatever because I triggered my drums when they did well almost did so when we got to rehearsal he asked me he was like alright dad we're gonna start with you he was like did you get the samples for a body on me and I was just like yeah he was like alright what you got and I was like alright cool I got the kick the snares I got like some extra claps and stuff he's like alright cool Let's hear the beat. Let's hear it. Like, and it's just me by myself. So I had to play the pattern, you feel me, like with the samples just so he can hear, like, and make sure, like, I had everything right. So you don't ever want to be in that situation where, you know what I'm saying, like, they send you some stuff, but you don't know how to work the pad or you don't know how to do this. Like, you don't even have to finish that question. <laughs> Absolutely, I think that the musicians should be a little bit more, um, not popular, I should, I should say, but just recognized a little bit more like we should get a little bit more credit and a little bit more recognition bro because there's a lot of albums like yo james brown drummer his sample is on a bunch of records bro like and he doesn't get no recognition from it he hasn't got any money and it's just like a whole bunch of other musicians who is like that as well like we just get a work for hire you feel me but like the artists and the labels and everybody else, the songs are playing on the radio. They getting like residual checks from that. But you only got one work for hire check, but like your song is a crazy hit smash and a, a single that everybody remember like for decades and years later. Like that's kind of like a slap in the face to us musicians, I feel like. Cause it's like, man, I was the one that was in the studio. I'm the one that created that vibe, whether it's drums, bass, guitar, whatever. Like, I'm the one that created that vibe. You feel me? Like, so for y'all to be benefiting off of it and me not benefiting off of it, it's kind of like, dang, that's messed up. So I do feel like us musicians should get like more recognition. But also, I feel like us musicians, we have to take the time to um, go and get like our production stuff up you feel me and i'm not talking about as just a producer i'm saying like if you want to get those residual checks and things like that you got to get with an ASCAP or you got to get with bmi you feel me so like they can know like oh i mean oh my artist he did this he played on this song oh yeah let's let us get those royalties you feel what i'm saying like you you have to know like some of the music business yourself and not only just the playing part of it like you need to study like music business and understand like that way you won't get played with your contracts and all of that so just as well as i feel like we need more recognition i feel like us musicians should be more on top of our business stuff too so i've gotten a chance to play with teddy riley man black street um guy rita ora justin bieber um John P. Key. I got a chance to tour with an artist all the way from the Ukraine. Her name is Tina Carroll. I did her DVD um, and her live album. Um, I got a chance to perform with the late great, you feel me? Nipsey Hustle Man, R.I.P. Nipsey Hustle Man. Like, he was one of the coolest dudes on the planet, bro. Like, I only got to interact with him maybe like three or four times, but within those times, bro, like he was just so cool, like so humble. Like we always talk, like I remember, bro, the last show that we did with him, bro, man, Jay-Z was at the show and a couple of other people. Like Nipsey came to me after the show, the very first thing he said, he was like, yo, you were killing, bro. I was like, man, for real? I was like, he was like, yeah, bro. He said, man, the very first thing Jay-Z came to me and said was like, yo, yo drummer, bro? Like, you were killing. Like, you feel me? So, man, that's just that's just a couple of people. But, man, yeah, man, R.I.P. Nipsey Hussle, man, for sure. He made us all equal. He made us different, you feel what I'm saying? Like, in our own special way, but we're all equal. Like, nobody is bigger than this person or this person not bigger than this person. So, I never held them to, like, that standard. They was always just like, oh, what's up? I said, all right, cool. <laughs> you feel me? Like, 
since I was younger. I'm going to stop touring eventually, unless I want to, but I'm not going to have to go on tour to make money and to provide for my family eventually, bro. You feel what I'm saying? But I'm never going to hang my sticks up. But I'm going to always play. I'm going to be 65 killing. Get your body insured. Get your hands insured. Your legs, your feet. You feel me? Make sure you, you drink a lot of water. You feel me? Like, just eat the right food. Because that's how you make your money. If you're a musician or you, if you're a drummer. Say you get into an accident. You feel me? And you break your hand or something. If you got it insured, you feel me? Like, that would be better for you versus not having it insured. You feel me? Because, man, what are you going to do? If you can't play the drums anymore, or if you can't do this, or if you can't do what you love, you feel me? Man, listen, man, this is my brother. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Outside of drums, outside of me knowing him as a great musician, like, this is my brother, bro. It's like an energy, bro. And like what I was telling you earlier, like, in order for you to vibe with somebody, if you go on tour, you feel me, like, 50% or 45% of it is your plan. The other, you feel me? I say 5% is your plan. Okay, bow. 5% yeah, is your plan. Alright, so the other 95% <laughs> is who you are as a person, your character. You feel me? Like, can people be around you? You feel what I'm saying? For two years, three years straight. Like, and it's just, bro, like, as soon as we met, it was an energy, it was a connection that made us, like, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. They're from Charlotte, North Carolina. Me and my boy Ray Marshall, we would drive up from Atlanta and just kick it like, yo, what y'all doing? Like, hey, let's get in the studio. Everybody gonna hate on you. Certain people that's don't normal. like you. That's normal, Certain bro. people not gonna like you. Don't get discouraged. Forget that. Like, a lot that I see in my generation is, they like, oh man, this person don't like me or I don't sound good to this person, so I'm, Oh man, I'm moping around the house. I'm sitting around like wondering how I can get better. You're already great, bro. You're unique in your own way. Different people, bro. God made us different, but he made us equal. And what I say is he made us equal is by, we got two arms, we got two hands, we got two ears, we got two legs, we got two feet. So don't let nobody tell you that you can't do this, you can't do that. Like, and that's what I see a lot in my generation. They always trying to, hey man, I gotta make sure this person like me or I gotta make sure this person like me. Forget that. Yo, thank you for catching us on the first episode of Hi Hats. This is my fam, this is my family. This is what I was telling y'all about. Yo, this one on guitar, you know what I'm saying? The son on keys, main keys and knocks. The man set the doctor. Yo, this is Julian on cameras. You feel what I'm saying? Zell on organ and keys. We got my brother, of course. Chris Key on drums, percussion with me. Myself on drums, percussion. 
My little brother John John on vocal. Vocal. Hey, listen, he got an album and an EP coming out soon, so y'all make sure y'all go get that when yeah. it come out now. And we producing it. It's my uncle Calvin. He taught us how to play. He on the Watch Me album and a bunch of other stuff. Yes, sir. And that is it, right? Yeah, it's family. It's family. It's family, man. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Thank you so much for, I having for having me. Thank you so much for having me and my brother Chris Key. On the episode, on the first episode, we love y'all so much. Thank you, Wes. Show. Thank you, Drum Life. We love you. Shout out to Tama. Shout out to Zildjian. Shout out to Roland. Shout out to Vic Fur. Who else? Shout out to CJ Thompson, Ray Marshall, Page. Man, all my homies from Atlanta, all the homies from Charlotte, Chris Gray. Everybody. Feel me? Everybody. Thank you so much. We love y'all. Peace. Yeah. <laughs>、Right. Go ahead, go ahead. Hey, I just want to let everybody know. Honestly, my pop's first drummer when he first started. This is his first drummer, Calvin Livingston. He taught me actually how to play drums. That that program you asked me about, he's the one who left all my drums at the house. Only had a hi hat, kick, and a, a, a snare, a, a snare, and that's that's about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted like you know what I'm saying. I had, I had to make that drop real quick. You know what I mean. Yo, I'm Devin Taylor. I'm Chris Key. Thank you for having us on the first episode of Hi Hats. Yeah. In there. Yeah. You too young, bastard.